Hi, I'm Joe McDonald, and I'm here in northern Costa Rica at one of the lodges that we use on our photo tour. Tonight we're going to be photographing bats, nectar feeding bats. So here's our setup for these bats. And th the bats are coming in to these feeders, which I'm going to remove and use our own feeder later on during the night. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up where I'll put our bait station and position this pretty much where the bats are used to feeding. Step two is going to be positioning the beam that will trigger the flashes that will fire the system. And what I'm going to be using is a Cognosys Range IR. It's a, about a $175, $200 item. And I'll be able to attach my flashes, or one flash, to the Range IR, which will trigger all the other flashes. So I don't have it on yet, but the beam will travel up through here. And when the bats come in to grab the, or to drink from the nectar, the flashes will fire. So first thing, let's place where I, approximately, where I'll have the range IR, where I'll have the feeding tube, and once I put everything together, I'll fine tune it, obviously. Now here's the gear that I use for this. I have these Monfroto articulating arms and a camera platform that I'll attach a ball head, and then on the other end, a super clamp that will be attached to the cross beam for these two flashes. So I have two super clamps, two camera platforms, and two ball heads for the first two flashes. And then perhaps the most important thing of all is I will have a ball head that will be attached to the camera platform, and on that will be where the flashes are. A flash is mounted. I have the foreground and or front flash and backlight flash ready to go and I'm going to mount them onto this beam and I'm going to bring that out so it's going to be out of sight of the six photographers that will be joining me this evening Mary and I, as we photograph these bats. I'm going to melt the flash next. And I'm using these little strobe frame locks for hot shoe flashes. And then I'll make sure it's locked in. And then I'll tug the sucker to make sure it's in there tight. And then I'll adjust it. So with moving this articulating up, this articulating arm up higher, I now have the flash completely free, or out of view, if you will, of the photographers. And I'll now do the same with my background flash. So I'm again using the strobe frame and sliding the hot shoe flash inside. Make sure that bugger's in there tight and then lock it as well. After I set up this background flash, I went back to where our or people will be shooting. And I was a little concerned that the back light, the front of the flash, would create a flare that maybe a lens would pick it up. I had a rubber band with me and I made a snook so that now the light's gonna go down and hit the, the bat area, but it will not uh, create any flare for any camera that's back in the uh, area where they'll be photographing. Now the important thing for this is that all four flashes are of the same flash duration. And the easiest way to ensure that is to make sure that they're all the same type of flash as well, exact model. In this case, I'm using a Fotex Juno. It's a manual unit, and the whole thing, each unit costs about $100. So I have four flashes, $400. Uh, the articulating arms are about $60, $70. The super clamp that attaches with it is another 30 or so. So we have about uh, $800 right here. And then the range IR, another $200, let's say. 
and uh, I have two or three light stands uh, ready to go. That's another 50 or $60. So um, we're talking about uh, maybe $1,000 in total for this. But once you have it, you can use it forever. Or if you want to save money, just go on a photo tour with us. It's all set up for you and you're guaranteed to get good results. Okay, the next step is critically important. I have just mounted the Range IR and I've positioned it so that it is along the plane of where I expect the flowers for the bats. So when a bat comes through, it'll break the beam and hopefully you could see the flash firing. Now, the Range IR has a, a green go light, if you will, that indicates that the unit is on and when something breaks the beam, it goes red and that indicates that you're either in alignment, if that's where you want it to be, or if you're moving your hand and not, not breaking the beam, well, it's gonna stay green. But as soon as you break the beam, it turns red. And if you have your flashes attached at that point, it's gonna fire. And this is that transmitter I was talking about. This is the Fotex Aries II transmitter. And the flashes, which are the Fotex Juno, are interfaced with that. So I'll just put this over here out of the way. And when I'm done then, I'll turn on the other four flashes, or the other three flashes, and double check to make sure my exposure is what I want it to be. It's a seamless interface. So I don't need to have a whole series of flash, or of wires, or, or different transmitters. Just this one transmitter, and each of the four flashes functions as a receiver. And then I can put that anywhere because it's a radio slave. And when they break the beam, boom, the flash is going to fire. My last step is to test the whole system. So I took the transmitter and put it onto the hot shoe of this Olympus uh, Mark II camera. Now I can see that I have a nice rim light on the, the uh, feeding tube or the, the feeder area and all four flashes are working. So I'm ready to go. The range IR will either trigger a camera or a flash. But for this kind of work, if you tried to wire the camera to the range IR, there would be some type of mechanical delay before the camera would actually fire. But with traditional DSLRs with mirrors, that delay can be as long as a tenth of a second and is often about a 30th of a second. So if a bat broke the beam, before the camera even fired, it could have had a sip of drink and flew away. But if you have the range IR attached to a flash, there is no delay. It's instantaneous. So if I focus on where the plane is, where the bat will break the beam, when the flashes fire, it will be an instant instantaneous capture, provided my shutter is open. And this is why we have to do, well, there's two reasons why we have to do bats at night. One, that's the only time they fly. And in order to use the range IR attached to a flash, we have to have our camera on bulb or a very, very slow shutter speed. We're gonna be using very slow shutter speeds of about probably around three to five seconds. So the shutter will be open for three seconds or five seconds. And during that time, a bat may or may not fly in. So all four of my flashes are set at 1 16th power. So they'll have a very, very fast flash duration. And I'm turning them on now so I can do the final bit of my test. And that is to check on the exposure. So I have all four flashes. And right now, all four should fire. Let's see what happens. There we go. So my, my next step will be simply to uh, do a time exposure and make sure that in fact the flashes are exposed correctly. I'm assuming I'm going to use about ISO 400 at F16. And what we'll do there, I'll tell you in a minute. So I can test the exposures during the day by using but uh, two hundredth of a second shutter speed because the ambient light is such that if the flashes didn't fire, 
I'd have a blank image. Nothing would appear. So if the flashes fire, I'm seeing exactly what I would get at three seconds, just as I would at two hundredth of a second, because flash exposure is completely independent of the shutter speed. It's all dependent upon the ISO and the aperture you're using. So like I said, I'm using about f16 here, and I can test my exposure. I'll do it again. And I know everything's working, so I'm ready to go. My next step, turn off the flashes, turn off the range IR, and cover them in case it rains, and I'll be ready for this evening.